C1 license to tow it. Tow it? Drive it, you donut. Hello and welcome to my long-awaited full review of the Hymer B790 Masterline. Hymer has a reputation for building top quality motorhomes. Now is that reputation well deserved or has it all been just a little bit of a disappointment? Stay tuned and find out. Okay, so off the bat, we're back at the car park of the Irwin Hymer Museum because we've got plenty of space here to film the review. Apologies for the sound of construction noise in the back and obviously there's going to be a bit of traffic going to and fro, but we want to get this done because we're giving the motorhome back tomorrow. And also just apologies that I need my notes here because there is so much to talk about. I don't want to miss anything. So I'm going to have to have my notes for this review, folks. And in this review, we're going to go through the following subjects. We're going to go through the price and the weight, the exterior, the cab, the driving, daytime living, nighttime living, storage, tech, including the Hymer Connect app, any niggles, breakdowns and failures, and finally, I'll sum up and give you my top tips for some of the options that I feel are really worthwhile ordering if you do go for a new Hymer. So we're going to kick straight off with the price and the weight because this is a little bit more involved than a regular motorhome. Now, Hymer is all about the quality. It's not about the bling. And that's something that's really important. If you are one of these people, and I admit I am one of them, who sometimes gets a little bit depressed by the quality of some leisure vehicles. You know, they're full of bling and glitzy stuff, and usually they've got the cheesy brochures and stuff to go with it, but the quality is not there. They're all froth and no substance. This is the absolute opposite. This is all substance, but no froth, at least no froth as standard, because the base price for this vehicle is £102,000. But in the current spec, we've got it here, which is, you know, a pretty good spec. It's £140,000. So it's got nearly £40,000 worth of extras on it to make life easier. Now it's going to be impossible to keep up with all the options on this and there's bound to be one or two that slip through the net. So I think the best thing to do folks is if pricing is really important to you and it is really important to most of us is I'm going to direct you to the Hymer Vehicle Configurator. So I'll leave a link in the description below and on the Hymer UK website you can build your own dream motorhome. You start off with the base of 101,000 pounds, or sorry, 102,000 pounds, and then you go through all the options and you choose the options that you want. Now, if you go to your local Hymer dealer, they've got one on the forecourt, very few of those options will be available to be fitted retrospectively. Generally, the options on the Hymer configurator can only be included when the vehicle is being built here in Bad Waldsee in Germany. So that's important. If you, if you want it now and you want one that's on a forecourt in your local dealer, you've, you've got to take it as it is. There's very few options your, your dealer's going to be able to fit. Some, but not all. Whereas if you want your dream Hymer, then you have to choose off the configurator, you have to order your vehicle. And as we all know, lead times at the moment can be quite long. So do check out the Hymer configurator. Again, link in the description below for all the options you can have. I'll try and include as many as I can and I'm trying to rem I'll try and remember to tell you what on here is an option, but really the best thing to do is go to that configurator online and double check for yourself. Now the weights. The empty PLM of this beast is 4,440 kilos. 
4,430 kilos. It was close, but no banana. But it does mean you will need your C1 license in order to be able to drive it. You can get it upplated by a whopping 70 kilos, ooh, 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 to 4,500 kilos. Now the payload in its basic form is 950 kilos and that's like wow that's a lot of payload however the payload does not include the weight of any options you specify so in this guise this particular motorhome with all the options it's got on it has currently lost 328 kilos of payload in options alone so the payload on this particular motorhome is 622 kilos. So you can upplate it by a further 70, give you a total of 692 kilos, which is pretty good, pretty good. Uh, if you're gonna carry four people in here, obviously you gotta deduct 225 kilos from that, but that's still a fairly good payload. If there's only two of you, you've only got to deduct 75 kilos for the weight of the passenger, which with all the bling on here is still going to give you if you get it up plated 620 kilos that's still plenty for a 200 kilo motorbike or scooter and all your bits and pieces that you'll need for a long trip down to europe or something so that's pretty good so that's the price the weights and the payloads now let's take a closer look at the exterior okay dougal are you going to show us around the exterior it's time to look at the exterior so the exterior of this particular model has come in the standard white silver is an option now on this motorhome we've got these lovely mercedes alloys that's an option and we've also got the optional Thule awning which i've used on a couple of occasions it's fairly easy to wind out so that's something that might be worth considering we've got the regular halogen headlamps on here led headlamps are an option and of course you can see we've got this enormous windscreen now i've had a few comments from people asking about the windscreen saying well that looks really expensive how much is it if you break it so i've contacted caravan guard insurance and their spokesperson Liz, we all know the lovely Liz, she assures me that people with caravan guard insurance, at least for their motorhome, the windscreen cover is included regardless of whether it is a camper van or an A-class motorhome. So if you do have to claim for the window, you do not lose your no claims bonus. So there's the answer for that one folks. Caravan guard at least do confirm that an A-class windscreen is classed as any other windscreen when it comes to protecting your no-claim bonus in the event of a claim. I hope, you, hope that's useful. Now as we come round to the other side of the motorhome, show you the gas locker because this, uh, this is really good. That's your, your diesel inlet point there. You know, so I need my keys for this. Bear with, bear with. I'm not overly, don't overly like these sort of, these things, but oh, let's give it a lift. Put my notes down. I'm trying to juggle everything here, folks. Oh. So you see, this is nicely on a gas strut. We've got two large bottles in there. I think they're 11 kilos if I'm, yeah, 10.2. So I'm pretty, pretty sure you'll get two 13 kilos in there if need be. Of course, you could also fit gas low if you are that way inclined. Your dealer could do that. But you can see here also, we have the Truma automatic changeover and crash sensor. This means you can leave the gas taps open while you are on the road. And then in the event of a crash, 
they will automatically isolate the gas for safety. So that, that is a, I do know that option off the top of my head folks is about 300 pounds. To me, I will recap on this at the end of the video, but to me that I think is the best option ever because when you want to stop and make a cup of tea and all that kind of stuff, you don't need to go outside and fiddle around with gas taps. You can just light the cooker. And if it's pouring hard with rain, you'll be grateful you spent that 300 pounds. This is the storage locker here underneath. We come back to this in the storage section um, of the video. And we've got the garage at the back, which goes all the way through. Again, we'll come back to that at the when we cover the storage later on in the video. Now the chassis is called an SLC chassis. It's made by Heimer. It allows for the, the double floor which incorporates the tanks and extra storage. The tanks, you've got a 180 litre freshwater tank and you've got a 150 litre wastewater tank. These tanks are heated. They are heated with the Alder central heating system and the this is cool this is really really cool I've filmed a demo of this so I'll drop this in here so your waste tank release is actually in the cab it's this button here which you need to pull a thing so if I operated that now the water would charge out which is great, so if you're on your own like me, you position the motor home, there's your leveling jack, and your, I hope you can see that there, that's your waste water outlet. I don't know if you noticed, there was a little hose in the gas compartment that you can connect to that if you can't drive over the, over the drain. And yeah, really, really convenient. Excellent. And I'm pretty sure that's standard fit. So that's good. So that's the water here at the back. Very smart back panel. Let's just take a moment to take that in. Isn't that gorgeous? So this has the optional reversing camera. Again, I'll cover this later, but to me, that's pretty essential. I'll put that on my list. And then you've got sort of hybrid rear lights, combination of halogen and LED. But what's really neat is, can you see, folks, the Heimer logo, one, two, three, the E of the Heimer there? That's so cool, isn't it? And you may have noticed underneath, as I said, this particular motorhome has been fitted with the hydraulic jack system. I know off the top of my head this costs about £7,000 as an option. We'll give it a try, shall we? So as you can see, what do you reckon, Dougal? As you can see, we're not quite level. So what you have to do is, you have to start the engine and then press the button and let the jacks do their magic. So let's do it. OK, you're going to show us how it's done, Dougal. So we're in the cab. We shall start the engine with the uh, engine start button. So it's just warning me I've got the door open, that's what that buzzing is. And the step is extended. So that's a good sign, tells you what that is. So what we do now, I shall shut this door. Is Hazard lights. Come on, Dougal. Let's get out of this noisy cab. If I bring, if I bring the step in, that stopped the alarm, so we know that works. Right, so, the next thing is, here's the control. Bedienung, obviously you'd switch this to English. Ausrichten, go! Now what's happening here, you can see the green lights are flashing for the jacks that are coming down. So let's have a look.
can't see anything going on there. Here we go. You see that? So these are the front ones coming down. Oh, the other, the back ones come down on this side already. So. Yeah, can you see the front lifting up, folks? It's just starting to rain on cue. But yeah, can you see it lifting? So we know it's still doing its thing because the green light is flashing to tell us which jack is going down. Oh, I could just feel it go up a bit there. <laughs> Wharton, so uh, it's telling us to wait. Oh, we've got more, more leveling going on. This is fun. Oh my goodness, this one's right off the floor now, can you see? We're right off. Can you see how that's levelled the van? My word. Oh, and we're off the deck at the front here as well. Looks like we're done. Looks like we're done. Cool. So we put the step out, which has upset the step alarm. Cool. Oh, that's that's quite a step up now. Engine off and hazards off. Did we do that correctly, Dougal? Was that to serve satisfaction? Yes. Okay, so let's now talk about the cab. I've switched cameras because even though this one isn't quite so smooth, it does show up better detail. And of course, we need to look at some detail here in the cab. So this is a German spec, a class layout. Obviously a UK spec will be right hand drive, but just to make you aware folks there is only one entry door and that's here on this side of the motorhome if you specify right hand drive that door remains on this side so if you get a right hand drive version of this motorhome or most a classes built in germany the door will then be on the passenger side it's just something to be aware of and then on what is currently the passenger side but obviously the driver side in the UK, you just have a manually opening window. You heard that right, folks. Manually opening. Which, yeah. <laughs> now, what I noticed, um, for those of you watching this who may want to have a left-hand drive vehicle, is if you're traveling on your own, as I do, you can't open the offside window because you can't reach. So that's just something to be aware of. I've had people come to this window on this side of the motorhome to sort of, you know, shout directions, encouragement or insults at me. And I can't leave the steering wheel. I can't leave where I'm sat to open the window for them. It's like, no, you've got to come around the front. You've got to come around the front. So the, the, the window in the driver's door is electric but the, obviously that will be the passenger door on, on a right-hand drive but the window on the 
passenger on a left-hand drive on the driver for a right-hand drive that window is a sliding window it's manual just as a little aside here the door will also the main entry door in and out of the motorhome will also always be on this side so that's the curb side if you're driving on the right and it is the offside if you are driving on the left that's just something to be aware of if you're in the UK and you've got an animal or a child that might bolt into the road of course you can just exit the motorhome out of that door if you're in the UK now the other thing that you may notice is that we are a very long way from the windscreen here I've turned the light up a bit so it might be a bit blown out but yeah it's a really long way I mean I cannot for the life of me begin to reach my dash cam camera mounting so that's that's uh interesting now sunscreens we've got a choice of two we've got the regular fold down one here but you may see oh dear that's not much good is it but what we have got and it's an option in this motorhome is an electric blind an electric screen and what you need to do is you actually need to remember to put these little do it down before you set off because you can't do it once you're on the move and then you press the button and your electric blind will lower and that's where it will stop so it will stop there as a safety feature and you've got a nice big sunscreen you see up there nice big sunscreen and yet you still got more than enough view of the road ahead so that is really cool obviously when you're living in the motorhome you can obviously just lower that screen at night uh, or during the day and you don't need to keep your finger on the button folks either that's doing it all on its own so this is an option uh, it's pretty good and it will stop on its own if you don't want the faff of putting that down during the day but you want some privacy there is still a pull-up screen there so that's pretty good that's pretty good and then to the side we have these pleated blinds which um, I've got to say I mean they're neat that that attaches by a magnet so they're pretty good to open but I find they're a bit of a faff to close because you've got to get the pleats back in the right place so it's one of my least favorite jobs in the morning is closing the blinds because you've got to try and fight the fact they're going to do that and of course things will be worse if they've been out and uh, yeah this is a faff in fact folks I'm just going to need to put the camera down and do this with two hands because I just can't do it with with one hand and keep the pleats in the right place so that's the blinds taken care of now let's look a little bit more at the cab now this particular cab has had a ton of upgrades the engines had an upgrade we'll talk about that in the driving section but you can see this has got an automatic gearbox the nine speed Mercedes automatic gearbox which is an option cruise control sat nav climate control it's all on the options list and we'll talk about those more when we do the driving section of this review so I can't really talk much about the tech in the cab when we're driving so we'll do that now give you a little view here of the instrument panel but as you can see the obviously the engine's not running we'll take the keys away because the keys have to be here 
for the engine to start but we can still start the entertainment system and have the entertainment going in the motorhome Is it going to, so it's picked up my picked up my phone and it can also play music by Bluetooth so if we choose my phone and that music is also playing behind us as well so you can enjoy the music you can enjoy the music but also what's really useful is you can program the sat nav if you wish before you set off before you even start the engine however i have got to say folks this mercedes sat nav oh i said the word mercedes this merc sat nav is abs in my opinion absolutely rubbish it's so confusing it's really hard to see where you're meant to be and the worst thing sometimes is you're not sure if you're meant to turn left or right and you can be exiting a motorway and you know folks when you leave a motorway sometimes you need to know if you want the left or the right lane on the exit slip and it doesn't tell you it doesn't tell you and yeah i've gone wrong a few times so the good news is you can plug in your phone here and it will support android and apple and their own versions of uh, carplay so i'm apple i have apple carplay and that works for me much better than this mercedes sat nav i do not like it but now what's very interesting is this is connected to my phone and unless I shut it, shut the system down here, which I'm going to, if I didn't do this, I could be walking away from the motorhome and if my phone went, it would go in the motorhome. It wouldn't go in my pocket. So again, that's been an issue I've had with the phone with, with the motorhome not, let, not letting go of the phone and then not being able to use my phone even though I'm not in the motorhome. So you've got controls here in the, uh, in the steering wheel. This side is all about the driving and this side is all about phone and entertainment. So that's pretty good. This is all upgrades. Cup holders. We've got more cup holders than you can shake a beaker at. We've got one down there. We've got they're not really cup holders there I think they're you can put things in them and then there's more cup holders here I've not actually used them because I've been hearing reports that you're not actually allowed to uh, use them in Germany so I've, I've just played on the side of caution not not drunk while I've been driving even water this I believe is an option this little cubby hole here with um, key connectors here USB-C, not regular USB. Um, they're both USB-C, so I've got a an adapter cable there. And I put my receipts in there, as you can probably see. So that's an option, and that's pretty good. So really, folks, that's, that's pretty much the cab. We've got um, cab air conditioning here. This is the... Now, this is the cheaper of the two climate packages because this cheaper climate package it's just one lot of climate for both passenger and driver but that's been fine for us we've got the uh, bluetooth connector here for my phone so you can have the music by bluetooth or phones by bluetooth without actually needing to physically connect the phone so that's all I want to say about the cab, folks. Uh, now it's time to open up the blinds and get behind the wheel. And we are going to drive a very short distance to the Stellplatz here in Bad Waldsee. And I'll talk to you while we're doing that a little bit about the driving. Dougal, cheer up, please. We're going to go to the, rest the Stellplatz. Do you want to go for a little trip? 
go for a little road trip shall we go for a road trip shall we right okay so that's the leveling jacks now up uh, there's no no buzzing steps in so off we go the sunglasses so I've taken my microphone off we're using the in camera microphone so you can get an idea of uh, the noise which is pretty good it's pretty good let's get going and then I'll talk a little bit more on the journey Electronic handbrake, by the way, very useful. So vision is pretty good. Slight restriction here, as I just needed to look that way. That bulkhead there was in the way. But otherwise, vision is pretty good. Pretty good. And obviously front vision, well, you can't fault it. This huge, huge windscreen do have fairly thick pillars obviously no rear vision the mirrors are really really good really good you've got blind spot mirrors you've got regular mirrors you can you can even see the back edge of the motorhome so I am very impressed with the mirrors that is so important when you are driving something this big so this motorhome has the upgraded 170 bhp engine and as I said in the cab tour we have the nine-speed automatic Mercedes gearbox. Now I love the gearbox, it is fantastic except one thing and only one thing and that is if you want to pull out at a roundabout you put your foot down and the gearbox basically puts its coffee down, folds up its newspaper, adjusts its seat does up its tie and then it thinks about going. In other words, the lag when you are completely stationary and then you want to move out quickly from a junction or a roundabout, something like that, the lag is very, very noticeable. It's really noticeable. You, it's something you need to just get used to. The fact that you need to put your foot down, you know, a few seconds before you actually need the van to move. This is exacerbated by the eco measure where the engine will switch itself off if you're stationary and it doesn't need the engine. You can override that, there is an override button and I've overridden it a couple of times simply because if the engine switched itself off and then you put your foot down, <coughs> excuse me, so the engine quickly starts itself up and off you go, it's just another second that you've lost as the engine starting itself up and of course it's starting on zero revs and it needs quite a few revs to, to move four tons of motorhome so that is the only and I mean the only criticism I have of the driving the automatic box it it selects you know the best gear for the speed um, when you're driving along as we are now this is just city traffic but it's absolutely fine absolutely fine it's just that pulling away very quickly and um, yeah that's all that's the only thing obviously you can have six-speed manual gearbox a standard now I am a manual gearbox kind of a guy I have a manual gearbox in my car but I think when you're driving something this big and comfortable I think an automatic gearbox especially the Mercedes automatic gearbox is an option if I was buying this motorhome I would go for the automatic gearbox because it does make the driving experience so much more relaxing you can see I'm sitting here king of the road we're doing 50 kilometers an hour in, in the city uh, it's a rough road but the um, you can probably hear there's no clattering you know yeah there's there's movement but there's no squeaks or rattles now the other thing is I am talking quite loudly just so you can hear 
but when Sophia was traveling with me and we were bowling down the autobahn at 120 kilometers an hour so what's that about 65 70 miles an hour or just over just over 70 we could hold a conversation and not have to shout at each other so here's a clip of that what ages were you when you lived in the u.s and, and germany so i lived in the u.s for well i was born in germany born in i lived germany. there for the first 10 almost 11 years yeah then i moved to the u.s i lived there for 15 years Right, so the acceleration with this uh, upgraded engine is of course good, but the handling, I mean, folks, this is a 3 meter high, 2.35 meter wide, 8 meter long motorhome. It is not a sports car. You are not going to be throwing this around corners. But what's great is the steering. So yeah, it, it's you do get body roll, you get a substantial amount of body roll, you're going to with something this size. It's the law of physics, but the steering is great. You've got the front wheel drive Mercedes, and basically what that translates to is great steering. It goes where you point it. And that is again, absolutely superb. So put my foot down, oh come on, get to move on. <laughs> That's just the one annoying thing. You put your foot down and off, please move but yeah steering spot on absolutely spot on uh, the other thing is when you're on the autobahn or on the motorway overtaking lorries obviously there is some drag when you're doing that uh, so just be aware of that obviously it's not as well planted on the motorway as something smaller and lower you are more susceptible to to high winds and uh, and drag from lorries and stuff. It's nothing terrible, but just something to be aware of, really. And I think, really, folks, that's all I want to say about the driving. It took me, I would say, a couple of days to get used to it. And now, as you can see, I'm just rabbiting away to you. Um, abs I'm on a narrow country road. Absolutely no problem at all. If I was a smoker, I'd be having a fag. But I'm not, so I'm not. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. I would absolutely not ever let fear of driving ever get in the way now of me buying an A-class motorhome if that was what I wanted. Because there is, it's lovely, it's brilliant. I love it, I love it. King of the road! So yeah, there's your driving review, folks. We're just coming up to the Stellplatz now and oh my goodness i do need to take care of some tank admin so uh i'll be glad to get that waste tank emptied and there we go easy as that easy as that okay so now let's talk a little bit about daytime living there's not a lot to say other than this lounge set is very good now this driver's seat is a bit of a pain to turn around this arm rubs on the steering wheel no matter what way you push it forwards and backwards it's just a small thing but when you're paying one hundred and forty thousand pounds for a motorhome i'm going to be that fussy and that's just a wee bit annoying um, and also i'll show you sort of here the it's a little bit compact around the front here the the driver's seat here sort of knocks the sofa and when Sophie and I were both here we were sort of clashing legs there's there's not a huge amount of room in the living space for four people to comfortably lounge there's plenty of room for four people to dine this table as you can see moves around so you could easily have one two three four five people but of course whoever's sitting here is going to be clashing again with the person in this seat and you're sort of going to be oh just pulled my microphone just you're sort of going to be perched on the edge of your seat to eat your meal but other than that um yeah it's pretty good it's your pretty standard a-class lounge area a little bit compact here at the at the front bit of knee clashing going on but really nothing else to report 
I'll obviously cover the lighting in the nighttime section of the video, so let's talk about the kitchen. Okay, so in the kitchen, we're back to handheld because the, as I say, the smooth camera doesn't really pick out all the detail. Now again, the kitchen is another area that can be upgraded to the nth degree. This is pretty much the standard kitchen with a three burner hob, but it does have spark ignition. And we don't have a grill or an oven in the standard spec, but we do get this huge Dometic fridge freezer with a cupboard above, which I'll come to in storage. So if you specify the tech tower with an oven, you'll get an oven up there. And you can actually specify a UK style cooker with the oven and grill, and that will go here in place of these drawers. But before we finish talking about this fridge, now I used to think this was a brilliant idea, the, uh, the two way door. So if you're in the kitchen, you can open the door this way and get to the fridge there. And then if you're, say for example, having your meal and you want to reach for a bottle of water, you can open the fridge this way. And if it works, which it does at the moment, that's all good. But the problem is you really have to shut, make sure you shut the doors properly because if you don't, the door falls off. So the other thing to be aware of is you have to bend down and, and open it in the, in the middle of the door. So you can't, and you have to make sure it's closed like that. It's just not, it's not Mercedes, is it folks? The fact that you've got to bend down, open it in the middle, and then when you close it, you've got to, I'm disappointed. I've got to say slightly disappointed with how well this two way door works. I'd be interested to know how people have got on with them in the comments, whether or not you've had the same problems or whether I'm just being awkward. This is super clever, super clever. Because you've got the chopping board on the back of the sink cover here. And then if you still don't want it, it clips into a holder here. Can you see? And I just think that is really clever. As you can see, it's not the biggest kitchen in the world, but it's, it's good enough. It's good enough. I mean, it's never going to please Delia Smith, but for people who are, who like me, just like simple food, it's absolutely fine. I mean, there are bigger kitchens are available in different motorhomes, but it does the job. Before we move on to nighttime, let's have a look at the washroom. We've got a central washroom here and it has no surprises. So first of all, you got the neat touch where the door partitions off the back of the motorhome. So you've got a completely private bedroom and ensuite. But if, for example, you have guests, there is a screen here and you can screen off the actual bed area from the, 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 the washroom. So you can pull the screen across and use the ensuite in privacy from both the main living area and the bedroom. When I say privacy, obviously they won't be able to see you, but they'll certainly be able to hear you in the bedroom. So that's good. Because another thing to be aware of folks is if you are using the loo, if we come into the bathroom now, or oh, before I forget, I'd better do a hello. Sorry for those fans. You stand here. Now, if you look, can you see that window in the bedroom? I've put the blind up folks. Can you guess why? Yes, everyone can see you on the loo through the bedroom window. So that's just, yes. Sophie had a bit of a shock when she, she used the loo on our day out together. 
but coming back to the ensuite, it's it's functional, it does the job. You've got a loo, and obviously with the door open, you've just got plenty of leg room. And they have a little toilet roll dispenser in the cupboard here. Trust me, folks, it doesn't work. It just rips the each sheet off, and um, it's really fiddly. It's far easier just to lay it that way and open the door and grab it when you are needing it then fairly decent sized sink and yeah we've got storage here i know we are going to do storage later but plenty of storage on this side and then we've got a roof light a couple of pegs there was a towel rail i'm sure you saw the towel rail and then we have the shower so I want to talk a little bit about the shower. I've obviously used this every day since I've been in the motorhome. First of all, this has got the optional wooden batten in the floor, the wooden duck board, which you do need to remove before you take a shower. Because I'm, whoop, which is just a bit... And then you've got to put it somewhere. And my experience is no matter where you put it, it's going to be in the way but you do see you do have two drains which is good so if you are on a slight slope that's no real issue we've got a shelf here to put your shower gel or your soap my soap goes on there a couple of little pegs again for your drying cloths and then what's great is you've got a rail here and that's really useful, not just for drying towels, but also hanging wet coats it, when the time comes. Now I'm gonna turn the shower on folks to give you an idea of the flow rate. All I can say is it's, it's okay, but there you go. If I hold it up at 90 degrees, can you see that? So it's okay, but it's no more than okay, that flow rate. So it's been fine for me, bold bloke, for taking a shower. I don't need to switch it off while soaping up. But if you are someone with copious amounts of hair, then you will probably need to switch off the, the, the water while you're shampooing, otherwise you will run out. So that is daytime living, kitchen and washroom. Now before it gets dark, we're gonna move on to nighttime living and have a look at the sleeping arrangements. Okay, so we're gonna start with the front bed because this double bed at the front, it's a manual pull down bed. This comes as standard. And the first thing you have to do is wiggle the seats again and put these seats down. I wonder how long Dougal's gonna stay there. He's sat there, he's slightly off camera. So with the seats down, all you need to do apparently is I've not actually done this before, folks, because funnily enough, I haven't been using the bed. Well, that's it. You just lift this thing up and pull it down. Yep, we're good. There you go. That is it. That is it. Now then, let's see how big it is. Looks massive. So length is, length is six foot three, 191 centimeters. And the width, the width is four foot eight, 
143 centimeters. As an option, you can actually have this as two single beds. They are co-joined in the middle, but you can actually have this as single beds or you can have cupboards in here if you like. So you can see this bed area has got a roof light. It's fairly comfortable. The height, so the height there folks is mm, two foot, one, two, three, four, two foot five, 74 centimeters. Two foot five, 74 centimeters height. So it's not claustrophobic. You would remove this um, elastic. Um, yeah, and you've got a couple of reading lights as well. So that is really good. Now, the one thing I have been told, can you see the table in the uh, camera there? Is you do not stand on the table to get into the bed. You can get a ladder if necessary. And let me grab the camera. Oh, Dougal, cheer up. So as I was saying, you, you have got the guards there, the, the child guards that you would put in place to stop children falling out. But I've been told, haven't I, Dougal, that if you don't want the ladder, all you need to do is stand on this little sofa here and go into bed that way. What do you reckon, Dougal? Could you manage that? Could you manage that? I'm not going to ask you to. So there you go, folks. That is the front bed. And like I say, you can have that as an option as two singles. Another option is to have it dropping down electrically. Now, because it's cantilevered, it's not too bad to bring down manually. And I just think the manual bed, it's nothing really to go wrong. But if that is a bit much for you, don't worry. You can specify the electric bed. Okay, let's raise this up and then let's go look at the, the main bed at the back. It literally is just a case of pull it. And once again, wiggle the Silly driver's seat. Oh. There's lots of to and fro with this driver's seat. No, that's a bit, oh, touch light there. We'll come back to lighting once it's got a bit darker. Let's have a look at the back bed. We're gonna talk about lighting and storage later. So all we really need to talk about with the rear bed, of course, is dimensions. And when I say dimensions, I mean real life dimensions, not the ones you see in the brochure, because if you can see, I'll move the camera you can see you've got like a, a c-shape foot to the mattress so you've got quite a quite a cut off there folks so you can bet your bottom dollar that the brochure is only going to give you this longest measurement let me give you the real measurements which are width width at the widest point here is my goodness that's impressive <laughs> Five foot, just double check that. It's practically, practically five foot two, which is 157 centimeters. So when they say queen bed, they're not kidding. Now at the longest point, I get my duvet out the way. So at the, long, at the longest point of the bed, it's about six foot five, 196 centimeters. That's pretty good, isn't it? But I'm also going to take the I'm also going to take the measurement, folks, sort of a third of the way along, because I reckon roughly here is is a natural sleeping position when there's two of you, and at this point, about a third of the way along, because of the cutoff of the mattress. Um, we're now looking at a very reasonable six foot three, 190 centimeters. So that is really good. If we move along a few more inches here, that reduces quite substantially to five foot 11, 180 centimeters. 
were so I would basically if you're six foot six foot or under uh, you're going to be absolutely fine almost anywhere on this mattress but anyone over six foot is going to be taking the middle of the mattress which is no good if there's someone else in the bed with you so that's the real life report about the bed so the next thing to talk about at night time is the lighting but it's still a bit light so we'll wait till it gets dark and then i'll come back to you right Diggs, you're coming up come on in come on have a drink. Okay, so let's have a little chat about the lighting in this motorhome. A bit bright that one. I have never known a leisure vehicle with such versatile lighting. You can do almost anything with the lighting in this motorhome. And I think the best thing for me to do is to jump up, grab the camera and show you just some of the permutations you can have with the lighting. What do you reckon, Dukes? Yes, let's show them. So as you can see, we've got these very bright reading lights in the cab here, which are great if you want to read a book or something. And uh, let me show you what else we got. Oh, Dougal, cheer up. So at the moment, we've got pretty much on full lighting here. We've got a little light over the table. This has been really useful. Got the lights on in the kitchen. We've got lights over the lockers. We've even got lights on the floor. Can you see under the, uh, under the bonquettes? If I do the switch, you can see them off. On. It gives a lovely sort of hovering effect. If this isn't enough light for you folks, we've got another couple of lights here. So we really can, I mean, how bright is that? If you want plenty of light, that is absolutely awesome. Lights up in here, but we can turn them all off. We can have it nice and chill. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's turn off the kitchen light. Let's turn off the this, although I think this is, before I turn this off, look at this. I think that's really cool. Yeah, if we turn off the this light here. And now, we've got a nice cozy ambiance there, but we can still work. But we can turn off this light. And now it's just nice and, you know, if you just want to close your eyes for a minute, still got these lovely lights on the floor that make the, it's, the furniture look like it's hovering. It's absolutely brilliant. That's just the, uh, the front of the, uh, the motorhome. So now let's look at the bedroom and I've got some of the lighting on there. And again, you can see we've got reading lights at the bed, the switch is here. What have I got here? So they, that's too much light. So we've got some nice low light to go to bed with here. There we go. And yeah, obviously we've got a light in the shower. We've got lights in the washroom. We got a nice, we got a nice little hello. We got a nice little subtle light there, and then if you want more light to uh, to do makeup and stuff, we got the big light there. Absolutely awesome. But there are a few more party tricks up the Heimer's sleeve. One of the things I love most, folks, is that when you go to bed, it doesn't matter what lights you've put on. So we've got all those lights there that are on. When you go to bed, you've only got to touch one switch. And all the lights in the motorhome will go out. So if I swing round, it's, uh, it's this switch here. Watch what happens when I turn this switch. Or press it. Three, two, one. Good night. But here's another switch in the bedroom by the headboard. Can you see what's happened? 
it's illuminated these oh, that annoying flash by the way that always happens when I use that button it only happens once it's illuminated these little lights on the floor so you can see to go to the loo there's another one here in the loo without waking everybody up how utterly awesome is that so that is really good let's put some more lights back on yay hello doodle so we'll put a few more lights back on because I want to show you another party trick so here's the other party trick folks and that is you may notice that the lighting in the bedroom is a nice warm color and the lighting I've got in the living area at least above the cupboards and also same lighting under the work surface that's a very cool light but watch this using the app and I will show you the app in a moment we can say have the the lighting temperature in the bedroom go to cool so did you see that in the bedroom it went from a warm color we'll turn it back to warm if I can get my fat fingers to work on the app yep and what we can do now we can match that nice warm temperature in the main cabin there you go so now we've got a nice warm color but then sort of during the day you can set the color temperature to a more bluey bright color but you'll notice that not all the lights change only the lights above the cupboards and the lights here so that's on cool that's on warm cool warm but if I put them back to cool you'll notice that for example the the main kitchen light remains the same color and other lights like this you know the reading light that remains a sort of a, a mid warm color and the same with these spotlights so it's really only the the lights above the cupboards and below the countertops that change their color temperature so let's bring that down to uh, to midpoint we're going to cover the app when we do tech and you'll see the app is not the most responsive but that's a mid white so that's midway between warm and cool so there you go that is the lighting and now it's time to go back to the daytime and have a look at storage so storage this motorhome quite simply has tons of it loads and loads of storage we're going to start outside you've got two main storage areas outside you've got this huge locker that goes in the double floor right across the width of the motorhome and then we've got the garage at the back so we'll start off by talking about this locker and i've already unlocked it but i'll show you one thing i don't like and that is there's no gas strut on this door what you have to do is you need two hands which if you just want to throw something in there is not convenient you need two hands and you need to engage the clip here and then the door will hold open similarly to close it you can't just push it two hands again push this up and then you can close the door now in a 140,000 pound motorhome I don't find that totally acceptable it's a whinge it's a moan it's a first world problem but when I'm spending 140,000 pounds come on Heimer a gas strut would be good so let's have a look at some measurements for those of you who've been asking for measurements total length of this locker is so the total length is six foot eight which is 202 centimeters 
so that is pretty good. Size of this opening is, I'm just going to do this in centimeters, folks. It's going to be easier. 70 centimeters by 27 centimeters. But let me show you something. If we look through, I've opened the door to the other side. If we look through, can you see there is this restricting arch? So that's going to actually restrict your, your load. So I need to put the camera down to measure that. Just bear with me one moment. So I've just measured it and it's 24 centimeters high and it is about 71, 72 centimeters across. So as I say, that's only 24 centimeters high, but the actual locker itself is... Do, 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 do. is 35 centimeters high. So you're losing nine centimeters with this, with this protrusion here. But you can see, you can use it to your advantage and stack your one and a half liter water bottles in there. And then I'm gonna show you something really cool, folks. Really cool. And that is, Inside the motorhome, we can access this locker from inside. So it's like having your own cellar because you've got your cellar here. And it is also conveniently right next to the fridge. So that is absolutely brilliant. I love that. Absolutely love it. So that's the big locker there. Now let's have a look at the garage. So I've taken just a little bit of my rubbish out of the garage just uh, as well to show it to you. I've already unlocked it. So again, you can access this from both sides. You see all my rubbish in there. The bed is height adjustable. So even though I have comfortably got my bike in there, if you need a bit more space, where's the button? Here we go. Watch this you can get the bed up out of the way. So let's give you some measurements, folks. First of all, let's give you the, the size of the door. Again, excuse me if I only do this in centimeters because otherwise we'll be here all day. So I've just measured this and it's 117 centimeters high with a usable width of about 90 centimeters. Although that might, that, that, skirt on the door is going to impede that. Let's measure that actually folks because that's going to be a limiting factor. Yeah that's about 85 centimeters. So 117 high say 115 to be on the safe side and then 85 there. Let's measure it now across the motorhome. So I've just measured it. It's 208 centimeters across the motorhome. Then if I bring the bed down to its lowest setting, let's see how high it is with the bed on its lowest setting. So that is 94 centimeters high with the bed on its lowest setting. This garage has had the optional checker plate fitted to the floor. Some extra mounting points there with the felt. That is all an option. As we can see here, the maximum weight of the garage is 350 kilos. It is upgradable to 450 if you so wish. We have some useful charging sockets here. Two charging sockets there and a light. There you go. So that is really good. And if we go around and look in the other side, again, not much more to report. It's pretty much the same here. Got some storage under there and another view of all my rubbish. Got another light on this side. And a useful net on the door here. No sockets on this side, but then you've got two on the other side. So that, folks, is your exterior storage. 
That's the other side to the, uh, the through locker. Access there to your drain valve and your frost protection valve. So there you go. But this also has the same very annoying two-handed retainer on it. So I can't shut this until I put the camera down because I need two hands. Not good. Not impressed about that, sorry. But the rest of it, yeah, awesome. Absolutely brilliant. Right, so to continue the theme of storage, here we are inside. And basically everywhere you look in this motorhome, there is storage. Underneath Dougal, in that bed box, there is storage. You look on the wall, there is storage. This is so neat in the driving cab. It's really useful cupboard and it's got two USB, two USB ports in it. So I've been using this to charge up my camera equipment. And of course, it's out of the way of prying eyes. That is awesome. If we come round to the side here, we've got more storage with some hooks. And as we look round, Obviously, we have some roof lockers, which are really useful. Split level there. So we've got all this storage in the kitchen. Under the cooker. There's your cutlery drawer. That's not convenient, but that's my fault. I mean, I've not even found a use for this drawer. Drawers have a limit of 15 kilos per drawer. That's Dougal's drawer. We've got... <laughs> I mean, I've barely got things in these drawers, but you can see there, they're pretty good. And then under the fridge, this is really good. It's a drawer and it's a very smooth drawer. Now, many manufacturers wouldn't bother to put a drawer in at floor level. They just have a flap and you've got to crawl around on the floor. Not Hymer. They've put a drawer here. That is top marks. Because we don't have the tech tower, we have more storage above the fridge, which I found really useful to put my camera bag. Oh, and my empty bottles that I take back for my 25 cent refund. Yes, you take bottles back in Germany, which I highly approve of. <laughs> I can't even begin to fill this. So as you can see, folks, you're not going to be short of places to put bits and pieces. Storage galore. There is only one place where I feel storage starts to fall down slightly, and that is the bedroom. And it's really not massively an issue. It's purely the fact there's not a huge amount of hanging space. I'm thinking if you're using this in the middle of winter and you've got lots of thick clothes, you've got a couple of very useful drawers here. Oh, that's my smalls, you don't want to see that. Of course, you can lift up the mattress, he says. And yet yeah, you've got my, got my rucksack in there. I've got another bag in there because, you know, storage. Most of these on the floor are service hatches, but some of them folks are, um, yep, you guessed it, storage. So that's really useful for putting your shoes and it's the same on the other side of the motorhome. Each side has a very useful shoe locker, which I absolutely love. So then finally, as we move to the very rear of the motorhome, we have a couple more overhead lockers here. Um, got my jeans in there. In there. And then, this is probably about the only, only limiting storage 
limited storage in the motorhome, and that is the hanging space. Because that's all each person has got. So you've got one on this side of the bed, and one on that side of the bed. I've had a request from Charlie Beasley. How much hanging space has she got for her dresses? I'll grab my tape measure and I will let you know, Charlie. Right, so there you go, Charlie, and anyone else who's interested, the hanging space is 42 inches. That's 107 centimeters. Charlie and her husband, Tom, have got a B880 master line on order. That's even bigger than this one. And they are very, very, very excited. Width of the wardrobe is 12 inches, 30 centimeters. So not a huge amount of space, but you've probably noticed the little light that pops on when you open the wardrobe. That's really cool. So I hope you found that useful. That is the storage. I mean, there's more storage everywhere you look. There's coat pegs here. And as I say, hanging space is limited, but you do have the hanging rail in the shower. So if you are going up to, say, Scotland, where it rains now and again, or even going further afield up to Norway. Yes, I really want to go to Norway. And you want to hang your puffer jackets, the shower is going to be an ideal place to do that. Oh, look, there's more storage I forgot to mention. Some storage there. So, oh, there's also storage under, in that bunk there, not in this, well, in this bunk. Oh, I forgot, to, I forgot about some storage, folks. There's a drawer here with more storage because, because storage, basically. Do you think there's enough storage, Dougal? Oh, Dougal, look a bit more interested. Do you think there's enough more storage in this motorhome? Yes. That is storage, folks. Now let's talk about the technology and the app. Oh, yes, there's an app for that. So, technology and the app. This is neat. Above the door, behind this very classy panel, is the on, one of the onboard technology the technology areas. So we've got the controls here for the Truma air conditioning. Yes, this motorhome has been fitted with, you guessed it, optional air conditioning. But this only works when you are plugged into the mains, folks. It does not work on 12 volts. We've been off grid every night except one. Oh, there goes Layla. We've been off grid every night except one, and that night wasn't terribly warm, so we've not used the aircon at all. So I'm afraid I can't report on the aircon. Here's your Alda central heating, pretty much as we all know and love. And then you've got your regular, you know. I have just emptied the waste tank, but there we go. So we got 25% fresh because we're handing it back tomorrow. So I only put 40 litres in, 180 litre tank, and the fresh is empty because I've just done that. Cab battery there, 12.7, onboard battery, 13. And then these are to, to put on your water pump. That's if you're connected to the mains. We have more control panels in this cupboard here where we've got the state of charge for the battery again here which is 13.1 uh, pass and this is your inverter 1800 watt inverter that comes with the lithium iron pack uh, is that to do with the satellite now this motorhome does come fitted with a television and a satellite dish Satellite dish is self-seeking. Folks, I really apologize. I do not know anything about TVs. I do not watch TV. I do not have a TV. And if it's not on BBC Alaba, I'm not interested. So there is a TV in here. Um, and I can't even for the life of me remember how it pops up. So I'm really sorry. I'm a very rubbish motorhome reviewer. Um, but it's a TV, you know, it's a TV, it, it shows programs and it connects to the satellite thing and the satellite automatically finds 
the, the, the dish sat finds the satellite and you've got a, a keyboard because it's a smart TV so you can watch your favorite YouTube channels on it and you know remote controls and things oh that's your Truma remote control for the uh, for the air conditioning that's your TV remote control so yeah um, I, I think that's for your um, satellite dish in the middle there folks as I say I'm sorry I'm a bit of a rubbish reviewer when it comes to TVs because I don't even remember how to get the TV out of there. I'm pretty sure it comes up electrically. <coughs> Excuse me. Pretty sure it comes up electrically. Uh, and it was demonstrated to me, but as I knew I was never gonna use it, I'm sorry I didn't pay any attention. So, moving on. As I say, that is your control panel. But of course, you can control everything from the Hymer app. So let's look at the app. Okay, so here's the app. It's the, the button here, Hymer Connect. And it's very good, it controls the whole motorhome, but sometimes it's just easier to use the control panel. Right now, the hot water is on, and I want to turn it off. Now, let's time this. First of all, I'm gonna see how long it takes if I want to turn the hot water off using the control panel. So I'm sat here, at the table and to turn off the hot water I stand up open this panel sorry that was already open I turn off the hot water else I close the panel I sit down job done now using the app let's see how long it takes me to switch it back on again wake up the phone Wake up. Open the app. Hyma Connect. No internet connection. Okay. Why do we have no internet connection? So, to say it's buggy is <laughs> a bit of an understatement. Let's try again, shall we? Here we go. Bluetooth is now established. So as you can see folks, all I did was I closed the app and reopened it. So, communal personal outside installation. Um, is it installation? Warm water boiler. Now you've seen I have switched it off. But here, it says it's on. Let's just check that once again. That ALDA control center is definitely off. But the app is telling me it's on. Oh well, we'll turn it off at the app, shall we? And now let's see, having turned it off, because we know it's off, let's see if we can turn it back on. But it's switched climate on as well. Oh well, maybe that's, maybe that's where it's all interconnected. I don't want climate, I just want the warm water boiler. Has that switched the elder on? No. switch climate on as well then. Now the elders kicks into life. So that's just a little bit confusing there. But you see how long it took me to do this rather than just stand up and... So here we go, we can adjust the heat settings. And you can do this from away from the motorhome and I have tried it. So uh, That's pretty cool. So you can actually switch things on. You've got the turbo mode here. So let's see if we can start turbo mode, which I'm guessing is turning the heating up to, to hot before a shower.
Has that worked? Yes, look. So now the, the hot water's on turbo mode. We don't need it on turbo, so I'll knock it down a bit. So as you can see, it's, it can be useful. Oh, an error's occurred. That's probably because I'm fiddling with it. As you can see, it's pretty useful. You can switch on the 12 volts, tells you if it's plugged into the mains or not, which we're not. It gives you the state of the battery. Hope you can read it okay, vehicle battery. Now the fresh water and the waste with the gray water. This only gives you the information in 25% increments. Therefore, the, tw the, the, the water supply, like the, the fresh water here at 25%, it will go from 25% to zero. It doesn't go 25, 24, 23, no, 25 to zero. Again, oh, I feel that at least it should go down to 10% so you know how much you've got, but it doesn't. It just goes 25% zero. That's not so good. Uh, it's fairly simple down here, communal, personal, outside and installation. So communal is places basically in front of the bedroom door, the bedroom bathroom door. So you can control the fridge. You can control the antenna for people who know what that is. So like I showed you in the nighttime section, this is how you control the lighting and you can control the brightness and the color temperature. That's really good. Personal is similar lighting with within the bedroom area. Outside is the outside light. And then as we've seen, installation is the climate control, 12 volt switch and water pump. If you do want to switch off the water pump, I guess it just means everything's together here. You don't have to go all the way to that control panel above the door. But yeah, it keeps everything together. I'm not sure you'd ever really use that in anger. Now you have some scenarios here. You can add, add some scenarios. Uh, he says, get your first scenario here. You can see it's a little bit unresponsive at times. So for example, good night. You can see what those scenarios are. It will set the lighting to a certain pattern, set the climate control, the antenna, everything else. So, I've not used that. Yes, okay. I've not used that. I've not used any scenarios, but you've got here, good morning, good night, departure, leave home, coming home. For those of you really into your technology, you can create custom scenarios. Again, it could be if you're out for the day and you're coming home, you can say winter evening, and it means put the heating up to 20 degrees set the hot water on to boost and things like that and then you can have winter daytime and it would set the lighting to a bright cool blue color and put all the lights on and all that kind of thing so for people who love gadgets that's absolutely brilliant so it's a very useful thing to have this app it really is. It shows you lots of different things. And here we got, even on the Mercedes side, it tells us how many miles we've done. Um, add blue level, fuel level, temperatures, central locking, unlocked. We don't even have central locking on this vehicle. Central locking, folks, you've guessed it, is an extra. So I hope that answers all the questions you might have about the, uh, about the app. We've got support here as well i won't touch that notifications what's that bluetooth is now established i think that's enough um so this was a question by tom tom beasley's charlie's husband so i hope that answers all your questions about the app tom and before we finish technology let's have a look at the lithium battery pack that's in the floor here he says confidently. So here we go. We've got the regular 95 amp lead acid battery. And then in this particular motorhome, because this is last year's model, as well as lots of Dougal hair, we have two 
135 amp lithium iron batteries. 2022 spec is to 150 lithium iron batteries. These have kept us going non stop. And then the great thing with this particular package, don't forget folks to check out the configurator online about all these packages and how much they cost, is that this particular package comes with a 1,800 watt inverter. And uh, that red light in there is the controller for the inverter. And that 1,800 watt inverter is fed to every single socket in the motorhome which is just incredible. Now, we only plugged into the mains for one day on our whole 10 day tour, didn't we, Dougal? And we didn't really even need to do that. And the battery has not dropped below 13.1 volts. So I really love that, that lithium package. The one thing this motorhome does not have, it does not have a solar panel. You can specify a solar panel. I would definitely be going for solar panel if I had the lithium package and the, uh, with the inverter because that just makes so much sense. This press loan vehicle has the air conditioning instead. So this, this doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me because this will only work on mains voltage. So when you're plugged into the mains, that's the only time the air conditioning is gonna work. I feel it would be far more useful to have a solar panel if you've got the lithium iron pack. I mean, obviously that's horses for courses. I think if you are, if you're gonna be charging down to Spain for the summer and you're gonna be on a site and you're gonna be plugged in, then air conditioning all the way. But the great thing about the lithium iron pack is that you, you can stay off grid. And if you're off grid, that air conditioning is no good to man or beast. And what's been brilliant about this pack and being able to be off grid for such a long period of time, it's not just about getting away from it all. As you may have seen on this tour, many of the Stellplatz have been oversubscribed and we've been, over in, we've been in overflow parking with no access to a mains hookup. And not having to rely on a mains hookup has given us so much more confidence and freedom in our touring. So I really, really highly rate the, the off-grid pack, the lithium iron and the inverter, because it frees you from being dependent on a mains hookup. And that would have been so limiting and quite a worry on this particular tour. So that is really good. So hopefully that's answered as many questions as I can about the technology. Sorry, I'm rubbish with TVs and satellite dishes, but I'm sure it's pretty much similar to what you're used to in your own caravan or motorhome. So that wraps this section of the review up. Now it's the, uh, it's the interesting time, breakages, failures, and niggles. What's gone wrong? So I've already said that one thing I'm not over keen on are these cab blinds because they're just a pain to fold up in the morning because of the, the pleatage. Uh, as David, David Bell would say, but can you see this? Is that I've put these back so many times and that is these few little hooks, they just keep falling out of the runner. And you know, it's not the end of the world. It's just annoying, it's just niggly. Another thing that's just annoying uh, about this motorhome is the entry door. Now for a 140,000 pound motorhome, you're expecting Mercedes style quality. And that includes a door that just gently closes. This door does not gently close. You know, you want it to be finely tuned. And if I just close it normally, yeah, I can't lock it. I have to, excuse me. And now I can lock it. That's not going to make me popular with my neighbors when I'm rolling in drunk at two o'clock in the morning, because that's the kind of rock and roll guy I am. I'm trying to make myself more interesting, Dougal. Don't look at me like that. Now, one thing that doesn't particularly worry me, but I know it worries some of you, 
is that there are lots of service hatches and access hatches on the floor and they do not line up. The pattern on the service hatches does not line up with the pattern on the lino. I'll be honest folks, it doesn't really worry me, but there are people who've watched my videos, uh, Becky, hello, and they do say they couldn't actually buy a Hymer because of their OCD of the floor panels not lining up. Now, the amount of floor panels in this motorhome, it would be one heck of a big ask to get Hymer to line up the pattern in the, uh, in the flooring here. I think the only way Hymer can get around this is if they used a different pattern on the lino. As I say, it's not a worry for me, but some of my subscribers have said it would worry them. So another little niggle that I've already covered is this seat turning it round. It's just not super smooth. And another little niggle I've already covered is again, this fridge door where you really have to close it really firmly. Otherwise you're in danger of the door actually falling off. And then finally, I just find the lack of gas struts at these little lockers at the side here, I just find it is not commensurate with a £100,000 plus motorhome. There really should be gas struts on there that you can use those with one hand. Okay, so there you have it so far, folks. We're just wrapping up now this review. And as I said at the end, we'll just have a little summary. And I'll go through, again, some of the options that I feel are really worthwhile considering if you are gonna buy this motorhome. First of all, to go back to the introduction, and that is, Hyma is all about the quality. Now, I have finished on a few little niggles here and there with a few little things that I feel they could do just a little bit better. But overall, the quality of this motorhome does live up to the hype. It is absolutely solid and it's very, very impressive. Nothing's really gone wrong other than, you know, a couple of curtain hooks have fallen out of their tracks or they could really do with maybe putting some gas struts in the, the, under, the underfloor cupboard there. Other than that, I mean, that's about it. It's not bad, is it? Okay, folks, we interrupt this video to jump ahead in time because today's the day I hand back my beautiful B790 Masterline. And I had a chat with a lovely Michael here at the Hymer Center about the door issue. I said, come on, this is not very Hymer. And anyway, you'll never guess what, folks. You can address that, yep, you guessed it, with an option. And guess what? There is a motorhome right there with a load of options that I want to quickly show you before we end this video. So let's turn the camera around. Yeah. So there you go. For a start, that is in the Hello Dougal. So that's the optional silver. And doesn't that look smart? This is the 790, uh, 790 I believe, or 780. Let's have a quick look. But doesn't the silver just look the business? This is the B780. So it's shorter, single beds, garage, mm, looks a little bit bigger. But what I want to show you folks is the upgraded door with the central locking. So if you listen, there, did you hear that? It actually closes. Um, uh, so that's an upgrade that you can have with the central locking. And the other great thing is, with this upgraded system, you only need a little RFID tag here to open the door. So you don't need to take all the big bundle of keys with you. And then the other thing I wanted to show you is this is in alternative upholstery. So we've got the darker leather, but we've got the lighter grain of the furniture. And I really like it. Also, this doesn't have the bed over the cab. This has the optional lockers over the cab and it doesn't have the seat here. It has the optional technology sideboard, which I think is terrific. You've got your charging points in here. And then, you know, because there's just not enough storage in Hymers, is there? More storage here. And then we've got an optional table. So this table 
is a nice sort of round but you can pull it out you see it's a pull out table but what i like most of all is the upgraded kitchen surface and look at this so this is another optional extra folks and oh my word it really really sets off the kitchen uh, I absolutely love that. I really love it. And I I love the lighter wood effect. I really do. So like I say, this is a this is obviously just to quickly show you the top without the uh the bed and with the optional top lockers and then this is with the uh this is with the twin singles that can become um, a big double but of course you lose some of your hanging space your, your wardrobes are in here on this one so there you go folks I just wanted to quickly demonstrate to you this uprated locking mechanism just close it gently and there you go you can now lock that Let's just do that again. Fantastic. Okay, let's go back in time and go back to the hand, the final review of the B790 Masterline. Back to you, Andrew. Now to go over some of the options that I feel are would be really worthwhile considering, I think the most important one for me would be the Truma Gas Crash sensor because this means you can leave the gas system open while you're driving and then when you want to stop have a cup of tea something like that you don't need to go outside and keep faffing around opening and closing the gas cylinders and you're, you're also not in danger of forgetting to close the gas cylinders and having them open in the event of uh, a crash so that to me is worth having now the smart battery system that is a fairly costly cost option I can't remember off the top of my head you'll have to check the the configurator online it runs into thousands so check the configurator link in the description below but I feel if you are investing in the motorhome of your dreams then do it right do it once and for someone like me I find that system brilliant to, uh, I certainly wouldn't pair it up with a, an air conditioner. I would pair it up with a solar panel. That makes so much more sense. And when I did question them back at Hymer HQ about that, they said, yeah, it kind of came like this because it's a press vehicle and they want to show what it can do in both hot weather and off grid. But really you would have either air conditioning, but you would be tied to the mains or you would go for the lithium iron pack and then you would go for the solar panel as well and like I say to have that pack and to have that independence and freedom has brought so much more quality to this tour for me so I, I highly recommend it and as as motorhoming gets more and more popular as you have seen from this tour to not be dependent on a mains hookup to me is money well spent if you are having the motorhome of your dreams I would do that if that's the kind of touring you are going to do. Now one thing I haven't covered yet folks which I want to cover now is the reversing camera. It's part of the multimedia pack here in the Mercedes cab. Absolutely essential as far as I'm concerned because yet yeah, that you might have two of you and one can jump out and go yeah a bit more a bit more a bit more but there are going to be times when there might just be one of you and this is a large vehicle if you ding that back panel that's going to cost you a lot of money i would just certainly go for the reversing camera it's excellent it's very clear and you can probably save yourself a lot of heartache losing your no claims bonus or a huge hefty bill for dinging the back panel so for the confidence that brings you yeah I'd go for the for the pack that includes the reversing camera, definitely. And then finally, the, the other option that I feel is pretty essential on this kind of motorhome, talking as a man who has a manual gearbox in his car, and that is the automatic gearbox. So again, the pack, the comfort pack that includes the automatic gearbox, 
I just think for this size of motorhome, for the kind of motoring you're going to be doing, the automatic gearbox makes it so much more pleasant on the road. Yes, you've got that lag when you're pulling away from a junction, but that aside, I think the benefits way, way outweigh that little downside of the automatic gearbox. So yeah, I if you are on the fence about an automatic gearbox, folks, you're not sure whether to go for it or not, my advice would be go for it because I think you would be glad if you did. If you absolutely don't want an auto box and you are more than happy with a six speed shift, then go for it, absolutely. But even as a manual box driver all my life, if I was buying this motorhome, I would go for the automatic box. Now there are loads more options you can choose. Um, you might want an oven, you might not want an oven. You might want a dual fuel hob, you might not want a dual fuel hob. All kinds of things you can go for. So as I say folks, for the last time, check the configurator at on the Heimer website and build the most home of your dreams. Now, once again, I'm gonna give you all the lecture because that's what this channel is all about. Life is too flipping short. It really is. Um, we lost one of our caravanning YouTubing community last week in his 40s. I lost my cousin this summer. He was 64. I lost a friend of mine this year at 56. If you've got the money and you've got the dream, you owe it to yourselves. Because if you don't, you'll regret it. Do it right, do it once. Right, lecture over. Right, so we cheer ourselves up. Um, just to finish with folks, um, this is the last, obviously the last video of the Big Heimer tour. We've got to reluctantly take this beauty back tomorrow to HQ and give it back. Um, so for the, I hope you've enjoyed this little tour with us. As I say, when it's a big tour, I mean, it's a big motor home. We haven't done a huge amount with it. We've been a few places and, and really put it through its paces and that's what it's all about. Seen some things that we've enjoyed, um, had a couple of experiences we haven't. <laughs> Ulm, uh, the, 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 the disturbed night in Ulm. But overall, it's been fantastic. The motorhome has performed amazingly. I have got over my A-class nerves and now I'm just king of the road in an A-class. Just bring it on. I think it's absolutely super. And I'm so, so grateful to have had this opportunity to try out an A-class motorhome for myself. And I hope I've at least helped you if you are considering an A-class motorhome like this beautiful Heimer B790 Masterline, whether or not it's for you. I certainly would never, ever, ever let nerves get in the way of getting an A-class motorhome if that is your dream. So finally, I just want to say a massive, huge thank you to Heimer UK who have sponsored this entire series without influencing the content. It is a condition of mine before I accept any sponsorship that I must be honest with everything that happens. So it is a condition of any sponsorship that I tell the whole story, the good stuff and the bad stuff. Hence, you've had the niggles about this. But a massive thank you to Heimer UK for sponsoring this entire series without influencing the content. Please do check them out, link in the description below, and also do give them a follow on social media. Finally, folks, thank you so much for joining us on this tour. Thank you for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. If you did, folks, you know what to do. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already, and it just leads me to say from Dougal and from me, thanks for turning in. There, Dougal. You've woken up now. Now, now the video's finished. Um, what do you think about having? What do you think about having to give this motorhome back? Hmm? What do you think about having to give it back? Are you pleased about that, Dougal? You're meant to look miserable. You're meant to look sad. We're giving it back. 
No, Dougal, look miserable. Dougal, look miserable. We re Dougal, we rehearsed this. We rehearsed it. Don't you remember? Oh dear. He never does what I wanted to do, does he? Do you? Kiss, kiss. Mwah.